lives are we supposed to start the podcast? One, two, three. That was all right. That was all right. Okay, one more time. One, two, three. That was better. So, you know, originally we had you clap um, and told you that, like, we had to do it to sync up right. voice and video. Right. We really don't have to. Oh, we never have had had. No, to? no, it was a prank from the jump, but I like it. I like it. Now I feel like we can't start the show without it. No, it's a kickoff that we need to continue. Yes, I do have to just to kick this whole thing off real quick. Okay. So I was looking at my direct messages this morning mm-hmm. and I got one from our friend, Bogey. Uh-huh. And he says, you are hotter than Jen. <laughs> <laughs> So I just, before we start, okay, thank you. I just wanted to let you know, thank you for that exercise in humility. That's right. You know, that's Hashtag always humility. That's always a great way to kick off. See you next Tuesday. Right. With just a total cunty see you next Tuesday, a total cunty comment type comment. That's absolutely okay, right. Okay. So what have you had it with pumps? Oh my God. What I've had it with is children's activities uh-huh. that do not start until 8 p.m., which I'm in bed pajamas the whole nine by 8.30. Right. Hopefully asleep by 9.15. Right. Don't get home till like 10, 10.30. Then your kid's hungry. You know, all of those things. But we have this twice a week during basketball and soccer season. 8 p.m. I just feel like there's a better plan that we could come up with so than that. I see the um, kid activity start time. And I'm going to raise you everything. Concerts start too late. Dinners start too late. Yeah, but I don't go to those. Let me have it. For God's oh, sake, can, can you it? let me have it? It's not about you. <laughs> I thought everything was about me. <laughs> can you not let me have it? Recently, Jamie Lee Curtis went viral on Instagram because she said, why doesn't Coldplay have a matinee? <laughs> Like, that is the truth. See? We would have so many more things to do. If I that would was be truth. so much more social if this shit started at right. like 4 or 5 p.m. Right. And then by 8 o'clock, you're headed home to your jammies. Jammies? PJs, whatever. Okay. Jammies. Okay. I just, I think that everything needs to start earlier. I think right. a lot of fuckery goes on at night. For sure. For, and I know this because when I was younger, I was engaged in the fuckery later at night. My dad used to say, there's nothing good girls need to be a part of past 11 p.m. So that was my curfew all through high school. Is that kind of sexist? Well, I don't know. He thought I was a good girl. That's the takeaway. <laughs> but uh, I remember when I got to college thinking yeah. about that and thinking to myself, he's absolutely right. Because you don't really start gearing up right. for mischief right. until about midnight. Yeah, no, I think everything needs to start earlier. And I think yeah. the matinee is like, I think NBA basketball games, like if the Thunder games would start right. at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., I would be at every Thunder game. Right. But sometimes they trot these out for like West Coast time zone. Right. And so you're not arriving there. The game tip off isn't until 8. And it's a total dick over because then you don't go to bed until like 11, right. 1130. I require eight hours of sleep on the nose. To even function. And neither one of us can sleep very much past five o'clock. No, we both early risers. Early, early risers. Uh That started, I might remind you, so that we could get up before the kids, talk on the phone, have a cup of coffee, and smoke cigarettes. It did. (laughs) So they would get up like at seven. So we had to get up earlier so we could just have that little bit of time. Motherhood tip from I've had it. If you are a smoker, wake up before the kids right. and smoke your cigarettes before they wake up. We don't smoke anymore, so nobody go fucking bananas. But how, ma- how great was that coffee and cigarette first thing in the morning? Oh, and just we would just solve all, all the world's problems. It, it was the best shit. Yes. It was the best shit. So let me tell you what I've had it with. Like, we've, been, we've been building to this. Oh, okay. Okay. It all started. This is like the gateway drug. Okay. Couples sitting on the same side of the booth. Right. That's where it starts, okay? And then it moves on to couples that have to do everything together. Right. And then it escalates to the couples, which we covered a couple of episodes, that communicate with each other online. Yes. And the crystal meth of this toxic activity (laughs) are couples that have joint social media accounts. I have never even seen one of those. Sadly, I have. (laughs) 
So they only post with each other? So it would be like Pumps and Blow Joe Sullivan. And that is their Facebook account. Or that is their Instagram account. Or what? like, yeah, or like Pumps Fam. It's like the whole family account. Oh, like the, fa- do they have individual accounts? No. It's all on their together A account. married couple. So here's, a, here's some That's theories. Weird. Here's That's some weird. Working theories that I have on this. Okay. Number one, which is probably the strongest one, these people are stage five fucked up. A hundred percent. Number two, somebody got busted having a little affair in the DMs. So the compromise was, if we're going to be on social media, we're going to share the account moving right. forward right. so that I can keep an eye on your DMs. So that was the compromise. Right. Yeah, because we have known in our day lots of couples that have a little naughtiness going on on the DMs that have to completely get off social media. Right. And then the person claims, the person that had the affair, well, it was just an emotional affair. Right. Uh, Shut up. You're an (laughs) asshole. Move on. So you think, okay, so theory two is that there's been some nefarious contact. Somebody fucked around. Somebody fucked around. So they have to only be on Instagram or any social media together. Together. Right. So it graduates. That's the crystal meth. You know, it starts with the same side right. of the booth. The gateway drug. Okay, now it's That's the all gateway drug. coming in. So what I'm trying to identify for people is this is this is the road to crystal meth in relationships. <laughs> if you're sitting on the same side of the booth right now, right. before you know it, you're going to be fucking toothless asking Facebook a question with your spouse that Google could answer. Right. Right. What I, My question is, what do... So do you comment to the couple or just one person? I think that's a whole nother thing for the for the viewer or whatever, the person that's interacting. How do you know who you're talking right, to? Right. That's what I'm saying. You know, who who is, who's putting up, hey, does anybody know any great hotels in Santa Fe, New Mexico? Who are you responding to? Right. Can you not have a relationship with one individual from this relationship by themselves or is everything have to be together and this is crystal meth shit i have another twist okay maybe the couple account is looking for a swingers or b a third to join them in a little sexual escapade that could be it i love that yeah i mean not that i love it. i mean let me clarify for the listener <laughs> I love the juice of that. I mean, right. the last thing I want to do is bring another person into my marriage because right. Josh Welch is more than I can fucking handle. <laughs> right. It's too much already. But um, that is very interesting. Right. So like as a divorce attorney, you've experienced a lot of your clients have swinging right. issues. I mean, there's there's just a lot of, you know, fuckery going on right. all throughout the world. Right. I think the two working theories that we have are... You either got caught fucking around. 100%. Or you want to fuck around more. Right. One of the two. Because if your excuse for this, if your reasoning for this is, I just love my man so much and we share everything, I can't have anything to do with that person. Right. I never want to ever see that person again in my whole life. (laughs) Like, no, thank you. Speaking of people that we definitely want to see, we have a treat I mean, a big time treat for our listeners today. Yes. So a few weeks ago, the host of High Strange, big time podcaster, Payne Lindsay, reached out to us. Kylie booked him on the show. Right. We were so excited. We thought that he was coming via Zoom. Right. So we get this email yesterday and Kylie's like, he's actually flown to Oklahoma City and he's going to do an in-studio interview. So I start freaking out a little bit. Yes, you are freaking out. Because I binged High Strange last weekend. Right. And it is a million times better podcast (laughs) than this heaping pile of shit. Right. I mean, it is so sleek. It is so good. It is so methodical. It is so thought provoking. And I'm like, well, shit, we're having a real smart motherfucker on this thing. Kind of nervousy. I hope I don't fangirl out on Zoom. Right. And then... Kylie gets this email that he's flown to Oklahoma City and it's an in studio right. interview. And so, I mean, Pumps is dolled up for you people that watch yes. on YouTube. I mean, she put on a dress. I even put on heels. No, you but have I... on the goddamn croc flip flops. These are not crocs. These are not crocs. Well, they're just as bad. But I know, but I did wear real shoes, but I just am more comfortable in these. Then it doesn't count. It does count. He's coming in here and you have on these goddamn flip flops. Well, that's true. Right. Okay. Oh, well. All right. So 
let's get Payne in here in the studio because we have so much we need to ask him. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Pumps, do you remember that time that my marriage was absolutely falling apart and I would go to my therapist like three times a week? I do remember that because coincidentally, my marriage was falling apart and I too was going to a therapist two or three times a week. Those were some dark days, but thank God we went to see a therapist to sift through all of that insanity. I don't think I could have ever gotten through that period of life without having a great therapist. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's convenient because it's all online, so it's flexible with your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential at BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Hadit today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Hadit. Okay. Hi, Payne. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to OKC. Surprise. I'm, I'm so excited you're here. I'm just in the area. Just, <laughs> just you stopped by from Atlanta. Yeah. It's the best thing ever it because is. I like just, you were in my ear for like 12 hours last weekend. I'm sorry. No, it was incredible. I was just telling the listener that your podcast is a million times better than ours. I mean, it is so good. <laughs> well, thank you. But before we dive into your podcast, which I want to later, I mm -hmm. want to stay on theme of our podcast, sure. which is, I mean, creme de la creme shit talk in here. Right. Okay. I love it. So we need to know what you've had it with. You know, one of them, I've had it with the middle-aged white men on airplanes who leave the window open. <laughs> And it, it sound, like it may sound stupid, but it's so fucking bright that right. I, I can't see. Like, my eyes are sensitive. But there'll be a guy with an iPad out and just the reflection of clouds on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he finally closes it and it gets dark, they'll turn the light on yes. above them. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And I like the aisle, but sometimes it's worth snagging that window just to close <laughs> the fucking window. You know what I mean? A preemptive strike. Yeah. Uh, that one drives me crazy. Yeah. That's Actually, today, the, the guy had the window the whole time. Like, it's the first time they've been on an airplane. They're like, oh, look how small the buildings look from up here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Outside of having a two-year-old, I don't think you need to point that out. I mean, we all get it. You're up high. It was fun the first time. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No, flying has become pretty insufferable. It's bad. It is really a miserable experience, mm -hmm. and it is a minefield of shit to have it with. Oh, yeah. Like, I think that one thing that nobody really talks about is the pre-boarding abuse. <sighs> yes. Like, here's the deal. If you're in the military, okay. But if one person's in the military and your family are the Duggars, does everybody get to pre-board? <laughs> I don't think so. Right. There's no oversight in this. Not if I was in charge. Right. right. And you, you'll see a family of like 12 trotting into pre-board. And I'm like, who is there any oversight? Who's monitoring this? They are, they're all trotting on. There's only one person that was in the military. I mean, the funny part is boarding early isn't even that cool. Right. You sit there on the tarmac for Forever. a lot longer. Yes. You get one little spot for your bag, but that's it. There's no perks. No, it, really, you're, it's correct. Because, you know, we'll jockey, we'll... We'll be like, okay, we're boarding group one. Let's go. And we get in line. And then you see somebody trying to cut you off. Right. And then I can get kind of internally. I'm like, what a dick. And I'm like, pump the brakes, Jennifer. <laughs> they can't leave without we're you. all going to the same place. Everybody's getting on the plane. But it, there's something about it that can just, about travel, that gets everybody jockeying for the best position. We're so bad at putting our bags up top on the airplane. Right. Like if this was an Olympic sport, <laughs> we would come in last place in the entire world. I, I, I have no idea why it takes so long. Yeah. It takes forever. Yes, it, it does. does. It takes 45 minutes. Right. Or the person that keeps pushing a bag that clearly is not going to fit. And they're like, uh, uh, right. I'm just like, bitch, you got to check that shit. It's like, why didn't you check that shit? Right. What about TSA? Man, um, you know, obviously flying sucks. That's that's been established, <laughs> but I have had it with the TSA. Uh, I really have, and it's funny. It's like I've flown a lot, right? The last five years, I've, I mean, there was times where I was flying like two or three times a week the whole year, and I would eventually get to this kind of headspace where if I was flying a lot, like two or three times a week, I could turn into this sort of 
you know, robot zombie that had no emotions and just take what was coming to me. <laughs> and, and it was a lot easier. Like, like right. my anxiety level was low. But if I don't fly for like two weeks, I'm back to like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and, and, like, uh, I, I just can't, I can't help it. Um, according to TSA, it seems like everything can be a bomb. Like a right. chapstick or yes. your wallet. Um, you know, recently, actually, I, I came through, I think it was New York. And my buddy I was like, oh, shit, I, I left my pocket knife in my bag. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. I'm like, honestly, they probably won't even see it. They didn't see it, so he got through with a damn knife. <laughs> right. And as we're walking out, there's like a five year old kid who's, you know, tearing up and they're dusting his hands for bomb dust. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, what the hell's going on? It's like, has there ever been a five year old right. with a, that had bomb dust on their hands? Right. Even a terrorist. A <laughs> like, is it, if it's never happened at all, then we should probably stop. Right. I agree. Well, I think the shoe's off. Remember the guy tried to blow something up with mm -hmm. the heel of his shoe? Yep. We're past that now. One guy one time ruined it for everybody. He ruined it for everybody. I'm like, I don't want to see everyone's nasty, smelly feet. And I don't want to walk around in my socks and get them all dirty. You just, ugh. I think that's a bad idea. The worst is getting stuck behind little kids. Yeah. That is the worst. And I'm not really a big lover of children and pumps hates kids. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> Except um, my own. Yeah. But it, they are the worst. I mean, the absolute worst. I almost think the airline should explore having like family flights, mm -hmm. right, for yeah. kids twelve and under, and families can all be on that flight, oh, and the rest of us idea. can be separated. You're welcome, American Airlines. <laughs> I think they should actually separate when you walk in the airport those who've never been to a fucking airport before. <laughs> Because it seems like every time you go, it's someone's first time right. doing this, which would I mean, I guess it's probably true. But I mean, if you have a bunch of reps in, you, let's put these guys, the seasoned people over here. Right. Yeah, definitely. Put the airport virgins on yeah. their own That wing. seems fair. They're on right? terminal, terminal. Yeah. If totally. you're an airport it virgin, totally there you go. Fair. Let's talk about your podcast, High Strange. Okay. So that shit is cool. I'm so glad you benched it. I'm uh, impressed. Totally binged it in one day. I got a manicure, a pedicure, went home, would not speak to my children, right. barely pet my dogs, which is unheard of in my world. Completely ignored my husband for the entire time. It was <laughs> so good. And it was so methodical and well thought out. And you just like start flexing right from the jump. You're like quoting Carl Sagan. <laughs> and then you make this really strong case about how we need to be curious as individuals. And then you drop that fucking rap song at the end. Let's go. <laughs> it was so good. But what made you want to explore this? I mean, I've done true crime podcasts since I've ever started making podcasts pretty much my whole career. I love the suspense and the mystery of it all. But, you know, to me, this has been a, like a topic I've loved since I was a kid. Just right. wouldn't it be cool if they right. were real or we, we, right. we're not alone? Um, so it's kind of just a fun idea. Then as I kind of really got into it, I realized, oh, man, this is I mean, I knew there was like some stuff going on, but I didn't know there was a, probably like, a lot of stuff going on. And so it kind of became a little bit more serious to me in terms of how do I deliver this message to people who may not be that UFO guy? Right. Right. Who, who might need to, yeah, I don't know, accept the idea that something else is possible or, right. you know, opened your mind just a little bit. So that's what I thought was so good about it. Because when, when I think about UFOs, my, I didn't realize, but my brain was kind of programmed to think, Oh, people that think that are kooky. Right. right. Yeah, of course. And you cover that in, episode one, mm -hmm. that that was actually in, I don't know what year, maybe the 70s or 80s, that the government actually started intentionally saying, let's label the people that have cited these things as crazy. Yeah. Project Blue Book actually did this. They put effort into trying to make these claims of UFOs and the people who are making the claims that they were a little crazy. Right. And that it was nothing to pay attention to. Right. So now currently in the last few years, it was revealed that former Senator Harry Reid had a kind of a secret investigative senatorial project where they were investigating legitimate claims from United States military personnel that are saying there is some shit up here that we cannot explain that are moving at speeds and maneuvering in a way that is impossible for the scientific, you know, abilities of our current species. That's really when the conversation changed. That was 2017. A New York Times article came out and unveiled that you know, the military was studying UFOs, like actual UFOs, and had been for quite some time. 
I think that kind of really, I guess, changed the stigma a little bit. And I kind of started a new conversation about it where it wasn't as taboo anymore. If these Navy pilots who don't really have a good reason to make this up are, are seeing these things, right? you kind of, you know, you tend to want to listen. Right. I want to share with you some headlines okay. about um, UFOs. Okay. Well, first of all, Kylie brought to my attention that there is a new trend in the UK that a lot of bosses and companies have seen um, UK employees calling in sick, claiming that they were abducted by aliens. Th this actually worked? This is working. It's a trend. They've seen a huge spike in the number of their employees calling in ET phone home. Mm -hmm. So they spend their whole fake sick day crafting this bizarre story right. that they need to retell to their boss? Yeah. That's impressive. It is. Okay, here's one. And you can tell me what you think about this. One woman claimed she was abducted by aliens, taken to a spaceship, and had sexual relations with the aliens. The alien was then apparently jealous of her relationship with her boyfriend on Earth, and this sparred a bizarre love triangle. <laughs> I hope that's true. I do really? too. I, I mean, that'd be kind of funny if it was. <laughs> Let me ask you this. If you were abducted by aliens mm. and there's like this green alien, kind of reptilian, kind of like what we think about from Hollywood movies, right. but she's got big boobs, mm -hmm. great ass. Are you hitting it? Oh, yeah. I'm fucking her. <laughs> To fuck I mean, the alien, what am I gonna say? Sure. Like, and then I, you know, she was kind of hot, but I didn't really want to have sex with the alien. No, I'm coming back, but yeah, and we had sex. Right? No, yeah. I think you have to have sex with the alien. Are you fucking her pumps? Oh, with. I would fuck him. Well, I, but I thought we were exploring your lesbian arc. No, I know, but I, I don't think I'd be there yet. I'd probably be too scared of an alien. The male alien, you would. Yeah, you'd have but to no, say you did it. No lesbian alien intercourse. Not, no, not There'd yet. There'd be a little of that. Hey, it's my first time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're doing here. Does this work the same? <laughs> okay, here's another one. Okay. The Alien Fashion Show. Another alleged abduction story involved a woman who claimed that she was taken aboard a spaceship and forced to participate in an alien fashion show. Apparently, the aliens had a keen interest in human fashion and had created a bizarre collection of clothing and accessories for the woman to model. Calling bullshit on that one. I'm calling bullshit on that one, too. <laughs> too. I think that's total fashion bullshit. Show? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, this one I'm totally into, and I hope this happens to me. It's the <laughs> alien game show. In this alleged abduction story, a man claimed that he was taken aboard a spaceship and forced to participate in a bizarre game show hosted by aliens. The game involved answering trivia questions about Earth and competing against other human abductees for prizes. I hope that's true. That's some Hunger Games shit. That's right. weird. Yeah, I like that. And I like, I always thought it would be fun. I grew up in the 80s. And so like we watched soap operas and game shows. And I I loved The Price is Right. Did you watch it? Yes. Bob Barker? Yes. I oh, yeah. mean, loved it. And so I hope that this is true because I would totally want to be on the alien would game show. Would you crush show. up there? I would fucking crush. Yeah. See, I would be so worried the geography questions would kill me. I would crush the geography. Okay. And then you guys let me know how you feel about this one. The butt probing incident. Oh, God. Which one? <laughs> You mean last night? Yeah. Uh, one alleged alien abduction story involved a man who claimed that he was abducted and subjected to butt probing procedure by the aliens. The man would say that aliens supposedly used a large Q-tip to conduct the procedure. A Q-tip? A large Q-tip. I'll say, I mean, records show or aliens love some bubbles. <laughs> There are a ton of They butt might not have a butthole. They're like, okay, I, I still <laughs> don't quite here? get what why this is here. So as you explored this, did you find a lot of the butt probing claims? Uh I kinda I mean I, I not on purpose. Uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of ass play in these claims. There is. They love yeah. that shit. Um th there's a lot of those claims. I I purposely kind of left out the the wonky sounding ones. Right. And sure, maybe some of those butthole claims are true. <laughs> But I'm not going to sit here and, and say butthole on my <laughs> right. my strange podcast trying to get you to believe in aliens. Right. Um, but there's something there's, there's a there's a through line that there's a, that's a common thing. You know, when did the butthole alien thing start? You know, who was the first one who claimed that an alien play with their butt? I, I don't know. But that could be like the second 
that's part an investigation of High Strength. Right there, right yeah. there. Second season. That's a mystery. Aliens right. and butt play. Yeah. Why? By Payne Lindsay. What's going on with the aliens <laughs> and all the ass play? But first, we need to explore what this is really about here on Earth, and we'll like at research and development. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, totally. Right. Totally. Yeah. Because it kind of sounded like a dominatrix when you were reading off the claim that maybe he didn't get taken by aliens, that he just ran into a dominatrix and was doing that whole thing. Well, there was another story <laughs> right. that Kylie and I found where this guy, he's an artist, and he paints uh, portraits of, he claims that he lost his virginity at the age of 18 to an alien woman. He has had sex with her off and on for decades now. This man's like 70 something. He has fathered multiple mixed breeds. Whew. And See, he, now, now you're getting into the bullshit, you know, like that's weird. But that's what I think when you, what Payne covers in his podcast is there's this crazy part of it. Right. That is fucking nuts. But then there are these Navy pilots. And so he tries to, you know, sift through that. There was a, a lady that I did interview and I, I didn't put it in the podcast, obviously, because it <laughs> sounded a little a little out there. <laughs> but she claimed to have a relationship with about 20 different aliens and they all had names and she had little drawings of what they all looked like. And they're all weird, like alien sounding names. And then one of them, one of the names was Steve. <laughs> Like straight up, the, the dude picked Steve as his name. Just thought it was cool. <laughs> cool Earth name, I guess. I don't know. Where did uh, she right. meet these people? I guess. Did I they mean, just come she to would, her? She claimed that they would come to her like in her bed at night and come visit her and take her up there. And uh, I don't know. There is a lot of alien sex stories. Yeah. And there's like Kylie and I dug into it yesterday. And there's a lot of like alleged alien rape stories. It gets Ooh. dark. It gets, did you cover, I mean, did you run into any of that? I mean, I, I've rape? seen some of that stuff on Reddit, but <laughs> uh, I didn't call them up though and have them tell it to me directly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we want to play a game with you called Had It or Hit It. You can tell us if you've had it with something or if you would absolutely hit it. Oh my God. Welcome to Had It or Hit It. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. Okay. First thing. Stanley Cups. Stanley Cups? Like hockey? No. <laughs> That's a great question. Did you see when you came in to our studio earlier, Pumps was had two thermoses and she was refilling one? Mm. It's this uber large oversized beverage that she carries around with her everywhere. With oh, her. like, the, no. Had it with that? I, I had it with that one, yeah. I've I, had I'm it. I'm not a water cup guy. Oh, God. Pain, like, please don't say that I in front of her. She's just going to browbeat me. Like, I probably should be. I'm one of those three plastic bottles a day kind of guys, which is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Right. Don't come for me, internet. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so, pumps, we have this, you know, I have this ongoing thing. I've had it with oversized beverages. She has to carry this around with her everywhere. It is iced tea with stevia in it, which I conducted a huge investigation into stevia, which causes dehydration, which further exacerbates this tea addiction. And I've had it up to my eyeballs. <laughs> and we received a comment on YouTube recently, and the person's name is just K. And it says, I wrote a whole essay under another video defending pumps and her big drink, thinking she was lugging water around. Whole time it's been iced tea. <laughs> pumps needs to be stopped. <laughs> You know what this is a classic case of? What? He fucked around with you, defended you, right? wrote an essay on some YouTube post, and then he found out that you're over there sucking on that iced tea with, st <laughs> with stevia in it. So does one fill last you the whole day? Oh, no. She goes, lots four. of refills. How, how many ounces are we talking about? 40 ounces. 40 ounces. Probably five times a day. How many times do you pee a day? A lot. Okay. Not as much as you would think, though. Okay. All the time. I, it, Maybe I would, once I would every, hour every and a half. 10 minutes if I drank 40 ounces of anything in the first two hours of the day. So it's 40 ounces times five. So she's drinking 200 oh ounces of iced tea, this one woman. <laughs> that's that's impressive, honestly. Mm -hmm. I'm the Olympic winner of tea drinking. Damn. Okay, had it or hit it? Nipple piercings. Hit it. Do I, you... mean, I mean, I don't, no. Okay, would you? No. It, it would hurt, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, no. Right? I, I have no, I mean... It's not one of my kinks, you know? Right. Um, I don't care if you do. Um, right. It can be kind of cool, I guess, sometimes, but... 
What about you? You had it. You're done with those. I'm neutral like you. Like Mm -hmm. I think some people kind of have a whole look like they've got tats. They got a piercing. Right. It's it's their whole it's their whole vibe. And I'm like their nipple piercing doesn't affect me at all. So why do I give a shit? Sure. I like to care about much pettier things, you know, than that. The TSA. We're, yeah, we're much smaller people than that. <laughs> we're way <laughs> smaller than that. No, I don't think I would do a nipple piercing or a belly button because here's what I don't understand. The people with the nose piercings, how does that work? I think they stick a needle through your nose. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, like, how do you pick your nose after that? <laughs> I mean, I'm a big nose picker. It's one Are of you? my favorites. Yes. Did you eat them as a kid? No, I didn't eat them. Did you put well, them on I the remember- wall? Did you put them on the wall? I think I did do that. I did that. <laughs> yes, I totally did my that. My mom came one day and was just... Bodies, just booger, <laughs> booger bodies all over the damn wall. And I was like, oh, shit, that is pretty gross. That is gross. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> sorry, mom. I'd be more inclined to get a nipple piercing than a nose piercing. I agree. What about a clip piercing? I get that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say no on that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm that's not, too. I'm definitely not doing anything piercing wise down there. Yeah. No. Okay. Had it or hit it? A yak mouth. Seated next to you on an airplane. What do you had it, had it? Yeah, the worst. Had Don't it. talk to me at all, at all. I agree. And I think when the and that's polite. That's polite. I think when the stewardess or I'm sorry, flight attendant is saying like, you know, don't get up if the seatbelt signs on. It should also say. And if the person next to you has an earbuds, that means they don't want to talk. Mm-hmm. It should just be part of the standard protocol. It's a bad sign if you're on the tarmac still, and they're like, so "Where are you, where are you heading?" Exactly. I'm like, Huh? <laughs> oh, it's work. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Oh, yeah. Fuck. Uh, I make podcasts. Which one? <laughs> uh, it's mostly true crime stuff. Oh, cool. Uh, my daughter loves true crime. <laughs> Stop. No, Stop. it's the worst. Recently, I had to, I had a project in Florida, and I flying by myself, have my earbuds in, and I know, the guy comes and he sits down next to me, and I immediately knew. Yak mm-hmm. mouth vibes. I knew this motherfucker was a yak mouth. So I really like put my ear, my hair behind my ears so that he will know. So he starts yakking and I'm very obviously like you, Paint. I take the ear pot out. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm listening to a podcast. What is it? Mm-hmm. He's like, so do you live in Florida? And I'm like, nope. And I just put the <laughs> ear pod back in. And then there's another one like, what are you doing going to Florida? Oh, for work. What do you do? I'm an interior designer. Then my fucking ear pods die. And he Keep sees them in. me. Keep them in. I should have. I made a fatal error. I take him out. And then he immediately tells me that he is remodeling his lake house in Ohio. Oh, oh no. I end up for the remainder of the flight giving free <laughs> interior design advice on the worst selections. He's like, should I pick this tile or this one? And I wanted to say, fucking neither. I wouldn't put that tile in my fucking dog's house. It's dog <laughs> shit. <laughs> But I sat there and I had to do it. But it was a huge lesson for me. Leave the pods in. Absolutely. Even yes. if they're dead. Oh, yeah. If I'm in a public place, I'm rocking pods. If yeah. they're dead or not. Yeah, totally. Totally dead. I bet you guys get it worse, too. Like, pretty ladies, I'm sure that the amount of annoying-ass guys who are like, hey, uh, <laughs> thankfully, they don't do that shit with me, usually. Well, Pumps was just telling us before you got in here how hot she was. No, I wasn't mm-hmm. hot. Sh- what did I say? Oh, my God. Kylie, oh, bo- rewind oh, the tape. Because we, we had a DM from a mutual friend that said I was hotter Oh, I than heard her. that. Yeah. yeah. So you were hotter. Right. right? That yeah. I was hotter. So I wanted to make sure she heard that. brag. Yeah. So you can only imagine. A little boost, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I bet the men are just, I mean, frothing at the mouth over you, you on know, planes. I just you're so goddamn hot. that problem. <laughs> okay. Had it or hit it, one star reviews of High Strange on Apple. Had it. <laughs> okay. Actually, let me, let me just find one. No, I have them. Do you? Okay, oh, do. Good. Yeah, good. Oh, okay. yes. Okay, so I want to do a dramatic reading. Okay. On April 3rd, Jad R. 80 gives you a one star, and the subject of this one is boring. A bunch of reenactments with voice actors and regurgitating old info that anyone with interest in the subject of UFOs would have already heard a hundred times before. I found it quite dull and tedious. <laughs> Here's why I hate this review probably the most. It's fucking not true. Right. There are no reenactments in this podcast. <laughs> and like, that sounds believable. It's like, oh, yeah, it's one of those. It's like, no, it actually isn't one of those. <laughs> Who is this guy? 
I don't, okay, here's one on April 1st, and this is Mop Top Muzz. And the subject of this one is deficient in critical thinking skills, and it's a one-star review. <laughs> what in the Walmart Jerry Springer is going on here? It's possible to loose, L-O-O-S-E, to loose IQ points when listening. <laughs> I, I don't think he has many to lose before he'll be dead. Well, he he's talking about what was, loose. What was their name? Mop Top Muzz. Pussy. <laughs> I mean, for real. Right. He is a total pussy because if you're going to deliver a burn, like if he really, if he's, you know, spell lose properly, especially if you're talking about intellect. Yeah. And you misspell it. He's like, talking about no. losing IQ points and right. this motherfucker spells it loose. It's right. perfect. Right. It really, it's, it's a microcosm of his life. Those I mean. actually make my day better. We, do, like, we love ours. I love just eating it. I'm like, yeah, mm. we yeah. love ours. Yeah. yeah. No, it's good. Okay. Here is another one. Okay. Uh, March 28th, Jedi of Truth. And his the subject of his one-star review is Impossible. B-A-L-L. <laughs> Think I'll pass on this one. Just more regurgitation of blue marble nonsense and the coming alien deception. Earth is a broad plane under the dome. Go out and test it for yourself. You won't find any curvature or spin Hashtag just Jesus. <laughs> Is this a Christian flat earther? Right. I mean, I'm confused. I think so. I mean, that's a niche thing. Right. There's, there's not a lot of them, right? <laughs> and But it's under a dome. I don't which get is it. rounded. I don't know. That guy, I don't he, know. He's too smart for us. Yeah, you guys, he, he's listen. figured it out. He's he for sure. He's the Jedi of truth. That's right. Jedi uh, of we truth. Have to, he probably knows more than us. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Okay, and here's my favorite. Uh, one star by Sadie Baby 92 Horrible podcast. <laughs> Payne tricked us. He gave us one free episode of Radio Rental about aliens, and it makes you think the entire podcast will be like that. But then when you buy it and listen, it's all like one boring documentary of stuff we could have found out from a Google search. <laughs> Funny parts were when Payne would say, I don't know what this means, but it was a fun little experiment. Uh, <laughs> glad you had fun on our dime, LOL. Also, he didn't know a lot of things. Maybe do research before starting a podcast. Thanks for the Google searches all in one podcast. <laughs> First of all, that was a very lengthy, that was like a manifesto. Totally. I mean, is that person saying, you're having fun on your job? <laughs> I didn't pay you to have fun, Payne. I hate that. When like, well, I did. So and ha, ha, yes, ha. you did. And that guy definitely did not pay. For sure. That for guy did sure. Not pay for to sure. Binge. No. That guy's still on episode one. Yeah. Totally. Guaranteed. This person is probably butthurt that you were so smart to tee it up that right. you could pay to binge, which, you know what? I was happy to pay to binge because it was worth it. Right. I want to get through it faster. There's so many gripes about that, too, which is funny. Just the option the option to pay to get something more than you're already getting for free right. pisses people off. See, I always want to do that. I always want the more. The premium, right? right. Some people just kind of like that just yeah. as, an, as a standard. Right. But they're mad that it's even being offered. <laughs> <laughs> they were never going to buy it. But they're like, you just really price gouging over here. I'm like, oh my God. It's already free. <laughs> it right. starts out I don't free. make podcasts for free for you forever. Like, <laughs> Where does this come from? Where's, where, we pay people over here. It's it's, like, it's free if you're a normal person, unlike me, that can wait each week for a slow drip. And I don't have that kind of discipline. Right. For five I don't bucks. Really either. I yeah. need that shit injected directly into my veins. Right. And you tee it up really brilliantly because you tease episode two, You like the last 15 minutes, it kind of gets you in there. So I'm like totally in. I'm Kool-Aid drinking. I'm like, I don't know if we're all going to die here, but I'm in. Here's my money. Take all my money, Payne Lindsay. I'm in. But I can see how there's always these people that are just, just butthurt. But you know what? These yeah. same people never get butthurt over. Like m corporations not paying their employees enough. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Right. But the, the Selective independent outrage. podcaster, you know, who did, I mean, it's a total breadth. How long did it take you to make that? High Strange? Mm -hmm. A year and a half. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and you can tell. I mean, it's a very masterful. And I only had fun one time. <laughs> <The> entire, <yeah. laughs> well, you shouldn't have Once. had fun. Yeah.
You should not have. I have to just say, I know we're talking about High Strange because that's your new one. Mm-hmm. But I absolutely, I'm on episode 11 of your Up and Vanished with Tara. How do you say the last name? Grinstead. Grinstead. And it's absolutely fascinating. Well, thank you. And you solve the crime that was over 10 years cold case when you started. Well, what's funny is, you know, if you just type in Payne Lindsay on Reddit, you'll see a bunch of funny little titles about how much I suck. (laughs) And they're all like, Payne always claimed to have solved this crime. He didn't solve anything. It's like, one, I never said I did. Like Rolling Stone did an article one time and I didn't pick the headline. It sounded kind of like that. And uh, which was kind of cool, but um, I didn't pick it. Um, So when people ask you, did I solve the case? Not technically, but if I didn't make the podcast, it wouldn't be solved. Right. And you didn't arrest anybody. Yeah. What was I going to do? Like, uh, citizens arrest somebody? That's not what anyone does anyway. No, I'm so excited. I can't wait to finish. Oh, it gets crazy. Like the the last half, it's, it's almost like a whole new podcast. Really? And it's way more intense. Yeah. Totally. Okay, so what is your next project now that High Strange is out? And I'm telling you, listener, listen to it. It is so much better than this heaping pile of garbage. (laughs) It is so good. But what is your next podcast venture? So I I have several. There's one that I'm really excited about, but I really cannot say it on the air yet because someone will totally take the idea. Take the idea, right. And you'll see exactly why. Like I'll tell you guys. Okay. Um, but I'm doing Up and Vanish season four. Oh, good. And um, just a few other kind of ideas I'm kicking around. I think that High Strange has done pretty well so far. We're halfway through the season. I would love to expand on that right. and you know make another season or at least a little mini series of something or I don't even know turn the feed into something else if people are game and want to listen to it. I have an idea on that. Okay. I think you need to do a high strange international Mm -hmm. to where you can parallel like these claims that these pilots have seen here. These American pilots have seen these other countries have seen you dabble in that a little bit. You mentioned that other countries have, but I think a high strange international season and I will be the first to take that IV and for you to inject it. I would even probably pay like 1099. (laughs) Cool. We're up in it. That's for you. (laughs) Um, no, that's actually kind of what I was thinking, like literally. I, I, I want to hear what the rest of the world is experiencing. What are the similarities mm-hmm. in all of these cases from a pilot's viewpoint, from a governmental whistleblower viewpoint, and then just the crazy stories like the people who are fucking the aliens on the game show. And the probes. I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like is, is the ass play as common with the European aliens? Right. Or do Americans just have better ass? What's <laughs> going on We don't know the there? answer to that yet. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's the, those are the hard hitting questions you need to uncover in High Strange Season 2. High Strange Season 2 probes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that I, I will definitely want to stay in touch with you because that was so, I cannot wait for you to finish it. It was so good. I'm honestly, I'm very flattered. Thank you. I'm actually just so glad that you guys liked it and people liked it at all because to me, I, it felt like it was going to be kind of a big swing and I, I made it pretty bold and, you know, kind of feels kind of cocky every now and then like a, I don't know, one of those like I'm still here moments as a, <laughs> as a podcaster yeah. um, without actually saying that. And um, yeah, I'm just glad people grasp the concept of, okay, I'll listen to a podcast about UFOs and aliens, even though I usually don't. Or, right. I'm usually kind of adverse to that um, because I really made it for people who aren't into that because I never watch those UFO shows because I think they're they're crazy usually. Right. Like I don't want to look into pyramids and start, you know, doing math to theorize something that sounds ridiculous. So I wanted to make the anti UFO UFO podcast. (laughs) And I think it seems like you liked that part of it. So I probably would not have listened to it had you not booked to come on our show, but I wanted to be a really good host. Right. Well, so nice. I'm going to download you. and listen to it. So I want to share with our listener that that isn't something I would have gravitated to listen to. The murder that you solved, mm-hmm. I'll be hitting that shit. Oh, it's so good. Tonight. I'm going to start that up. So good. But I did the most recent one because about two weeks ago, we were like surging in the Apple charts and we made it to like number three or four in the country. And there was this one fucking blue avatar that we couldn't get past. Just flexing right this there. This fucker <laughs> called High Strange that trots out Metro Boomin and the goddamn UFOs. And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? I want to take him out. Yep. And then Kylie's like, hey, he damned us. I think he wants to do our pod. And I'm like, oh, maybe I need to, you know, 
change my personality. Not be so mad at him. Maybe I need to not be such a fucking bitch <laughs> and listen to his podcast. Right. True. So I listened to it and that it is so good. Your masterful storyteller. Thank you it's so much. Very well thought out. I cannot recommend his podcast enough. And I'm glad that you came in town today because I did just peruse the Apple charts and I've had it has passed high strain. <laughs> you are beating the hell out of me right now. So just a little victory lap. Hey, this, hashtag that's a good humility. Sign. But once we're all eight are out, we're going to go, we're we running laps around <laughs> Once that butt probe uh, yeah, once podcast we drop that probe cast, <laughs> we're That's going it. big. <laughs> well, Payne, Lindsay, I mean, this has been a real treat. Thank Such you. Such a treat. But thanks for coming. Thank you guys so for having me. So much fun. Me. I'm glad I came in person. It's way more fun. It that is way. more fun. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Thanks for having me. I, I, honestly, when I hit you guys up, I, I never know when someone sees them or hits back. You, you never know. Right. It was like the next day, like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, cool, let's do it. Now I'm here. So and here yep. you are. It's the in best, our fair city. It's the best thing ever. I want to get your cell phone number. Yes. I promise not to be a psycho. That's okay. But I'll need to be like, what's going on with you know season two of High Strange? Pumps, you might want to be weary of giving her because she will start texting you nonstop about probably the murder. I know. I yep. did. I mean, I really did think I had it you figured do that, out. You? Right? Yes. Right you until would. I pulled up and I was like, oh god, it wasn't him. <laughs> Well, Payne, Lindsay, thank you so much. Thanks thank for you. coming. To Great I've to had have it. you. Thank you for listening to I've Had It. Please follow us on all the shit. Like all the shit for bonus content of pumps hanging a wire hanger oh, off God. of her nipple. After we receive 1 million <laughs> Patreon followers, <laughs> subscribe to Patreon. We're also exploring her journey into lesbianism there. What's the link? Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check it out later. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We will see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Bye.